Hello, hello. Hey folks, welcome to today's video. We're going to be having a look at settings that might be impacting your performance in Microsoft Flight Sim. You know, stutters, FPS loss, all this kind of stuff. There's no central book where we can kind of say, right, this is the one solution for all, press this and away you go. There's a number of different things. Plus, we all have different rigs, different software running, different hardware, different drivers. So what I'm going to attempt is share the knowledge that I've picked up over the last couple of years, things that I've noticed specifically with Sim Update 4 uh, on how they might have an impact on your flight sim experience. But of course, I'm all ears. I'm sure you guys have plenty of suggestions. Do let me know in the comment section below. I'll have a read of them and it'll help shape our next video. So let's get started and see what trouble we can cause. Okay, what usually happens? Your sim is running fine, it's smooth, it was a great flight, you turn everything off, you go to bed, you get up the next day and it stutters and there's all sorts of messing with your FPS and you're wondering what the deuce has happened. In a lot of cases, it's not hardware specific. There's actually a lot of settings in the background that are playing around and hampering your performance when it comes to your CPU and your VRAM. So to get started, let us look for the worst offenders. In order to do this, let's go into our menu. We're going to go settings. And from here, we're going to go to advanced options. We're going to turn on dev mode. You'll see a new menu appear in the top left. And we're going to come back into the sim. From here, go to debug. and We're going to open up the FPS counter. It's like the in-sim FPS counter. So we're going to target two things. One, it's going to be CPU options. What we can do to make sure that our CPU is not being overwhelmed by the sim. The biggest offender of that is the terrain level of detail. Now we're going to go into our menu, into our settings, and there's a couple of things you might start noticing. You might say, Murph, you're not using frame gen and you're not using DLSS. My recommendation is when you're trying to get the smoothest possible experience in your Microsoft Flight Sim, keep everything as native as you can. And what I mean by that is, you know, your anti-aliasing, keep it on TAA or DAA, stay away from DLSS and stay away from frame gen. If you can stabilize your simulator without using the extra bits of power, it just means then once you have it stable, you can then turn on the likes of frame gen and your DLSS and it gives you more headroom. Maybe you can start bumping up a few other settings to give you more visual fidelity. So we're going to start off down here at the global rendering quality. And the first one we're looking at is our terrain level of detail. Now, the terrain level of detail, this is impacting specifically on your CPU. It's going to be the distance in which it's drawing terrain and the detail in which it can push. Now, a setting of somewhere between 100 and 150 tends to be quite OK. But what I recommend here is rather than making massive changes, Use very small changes. What you're after here is not necessarily your FPS. What we're looking for here is all to do with smoothness. So we're at 130 at the moment. I'm going to bring this up to about 145, 150. And uh, every time you make one of these changes, just hit save, go back into the sim and just give it a few moments to see what's happening. Now, FPS wise, it's looking decent. See this little flash coming up every now and again telling us, hey, we're being limited here by the main thread. Well, that's our CPU. To show you the adverse effects, if we go back into our settings and we want to punch up the terrain LOD all the way, let's have a look at some of the impact this will actually cause. So the FPS is going to try and stabilize. You can see that we're being limited a lot more often. And we've dropped a good 10 or 12 FPS on this as well. So the happy medium is always going to be go slightly less than what your sim is currently showing you and go down by about maybe 15 points. I usually keep it in around 235. That's my sweet spot that I found out, but I might just drop it back to about 210 just to help us out. We can also look at the off screen terrain pre-caching. Effectively what this is doing, it's loading in the areas around you, the scenery around you, the objects, the trees, basically everything that you see and it's pre-caching it using your system RAM. Now, depending on the size of your RAM, the speed of your RAM, this can help with stutters, but it could also create some stutters if you're using the most of your RAM. So what I'd recommend is anywhere from medium to high is a safe bet. If you have a lot of RAM and it's fast, Ultra seems to work just fine. Now, we'll go down to our next one, which is the objects level of detail. 
and currently we're set to 100. So if we were to go worst case scenario, throw it up to 200, go in here and have a look. FPS isn't too bad, main thread isn't too bad, but what we're using here is going to be a little bit of VRAM because it's the distance in which, you know, satellites, uh, air vents, air conditioning units on buildings and all that sort of stuff, uh, well, they'll appear at a much greater distance. Especially when you're coming into airports, you know, the objects level of distance, you'd want to be setting it somewhere, you know, I would recommend somewhere between 100 and 150 if you can. So for this one, same rules apply, 15 to 20 points at a time is always a good, uh, it's always a good aim. I'm going to aim for about 140, that's my sweet spot, uh, but this always will have an impact, especially when it comes to stutters as you approach different scenery. So if it's the case that you're, you know, you're on a short final and next thing the sim has given you all sorts of stutters and yesterday was working fine, we'll go in and have a look at the objects level of detail. Some airports from some developers, they're just not coded right or the sim is just struggling to load certain textures. That's a story for a different day. But for this one, it's just trying to level the playing field here. So we're going for the smoothest possible um, performance rather than the hard numbers of our FPS. Now, sitting on the ramp here, we can use chase plane. That's going to give us the idea of how the camera is moving, transitioning, loading in all the different objects, plus giving us different vantage points and we can see that yes every time i load into a new scene or you know chase plane picks a new scene and um, you'll you'll see a, a bit of flutter when it comes to right what am i loading next this is where your off-screen pre-caching really helps because well it knows now what's around your aircraft back into your settings and one thing i want you to check out as well um is do you have max frame rate selected and are you using vertical sync if you're using a 60 hertz monitor, which most monitors are usually kind of 59 or 60 hertz, and you're seeing frame rates of like 70, 80, 90, well, you have a lot of headroom and, you know, the TV or the monitor, it can't produce that level of frame rate. What I'd recommend is turn on vertical sync and cap your max frame rate. What this does, it tends to smooth out the experience because instead of the sim constantly trying to hit a much higher FPS number, it just stabilizes and locks at what you set it to. Meaning that, you know, the hardware isn't being pushed as much. Now, we've other settings in which we can play with as well. These will all have an impact somewhere along the line. So if you're to look at, say, your trees, buildings, plants, rocks, all this kind of extra stuff, they tend to be aimed at your CPU. But what I recommend is ultra, I think, is overkill for anything. Medium to high, it's always going to be just enough right low in some places yeah if, if you know if your system's bound by all means but anything more than high i think it's a waste of resources it's a waste of computing power the next one we need to look at is this one texture resolution now every time you change this you need to restart your simulator but effectively your texture resolution this is the guy that's going to be hurting your vram if you have this on high ultra you're going to be using a lot of the vram of your gpu if you keep it kind of medium to high, that's going to be way better in terms of VRAM. And you shouldn't really see much in terms of your visual fidelity. It'll, you might see some jaggedness, but that's where your anti-aliasing comes in a little bit later on. So check out your texture resolution. That's always a big one. But just bear in mind, whatever setting you have it on now, right? Keep a look at your numbers, right? All your frame rate numbers, but also on your video RAM as well. It'll tell you what it's using. Uh, and then drop it back one level. If you were to go for my, for here, if I go to medium uh, and if I want to save this, it's going to say, hey, yeah, well, you need to restart your sim uh, for this to take effect. So just be aware of that. So we'll leave it on high because I'm happy enough on high. We could go ultra, uh, but the VRAM usage really does spike from there. Dynamic settings is basically a Sobo and Microsoft's answer to auto FPS. Now, auto FPS is a great little tool. What auto FPS does, it will tweak your LODs plus additional options on the fly in order to maintain a specific frame rate target. Microsoft put their own version in there. And to be honest, it is more responsive. Your dynamic settings built into the sim are far more responsive than what you get with auto FPS. However, the inbuilt dynamic settings is really only changing the terrain level of detail and the objects level of detail. What I'd recommend is if you are struggling and you want to get 
you know, the best, smoothest experience if you want to use dynamic settings and use auto FPS in conjunction with each other, it does prove to have very good results. Auto FPS can affect other things like the clouds and trees and you can set certain altitudes. It does work very, very well. If you're interested to see more or learn more about auto FPS, well, let me know in the comments section below. I'd be happy to put a video together. So what I use, dynamic settings on or off, it's your call. I tend to leave mine off. Um, all the other settings that we have here, shadow maps, uh, ray trace shadows, I think by turning them off has too much of an impact on the visual kind of finesse of the sim, but your mileage may vary. There is one thing, of course, that came with Flight Sim 2024, and that is the glass cockpit, uh, cla English Murph, glass cockpit refresh rate. Uh, this used to be a real issue back in 2020. Uh, it was always set to medium. I keep mine high. Uh, low is just, it's too slow. Because now that we are running on multi-thread, this was a huge update for Flight Sim 2024, well, this should no longer be an option uh, or a problem. Glass cockpit refresh rate should be on at absolute minimum medium, uh, but you should be safe enough now leaving it in on high. Now we have two other settings just to check, and this really comes down to multiplayer or group flying. Now we're not here to sort out the problems of multiplayer model matching. That is a video for another day. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and when the stars align. But there are a couple of settings you need to check to make sure that um, these are not impacting on your multiplayer group flights. So the first thing to do when we're flying online, click on our online area. When we're flying online, we don't need live traffic. We don't need, you know, either AI procedural or the live traffic being injected into the sim. We turn that off. There's no need for it in a group multiplayer flight. All right. The next thing we have then is the multiplayer replication models. They either have high fidelity or simplified. This will have an impact based on the number of other people flying with you and the type of aircraft in which they're flying. So I keep mine usually on high fidelity, but if I notice there's performance drops, I kick it back into simplified. It's purely just what the sim is using to load as a default multiplayer aircraft. I can go with, no, look, they're, they're in an F-14 with that livery. If I have it on high fidelity, well, the sim is going to try and load that. If I keep it on simplified, it'll say, well, it's a two engine jet. That, that's the idea behind it, right? So have a play around with that and see what works best for you. The biggest thing to all uh, of this, when it comes to, um, you know, your multiplayer settings, if we go in and have a look at assistances, and we come down here to where it has wake turbulence. This is an FPS killer in a multiplayer environment, especially as you fly a little bit closer to the group. So wake turbulence, make sure this is turned off in a group flight. If you're doing any group flights on multiplayer, make sure this guy is turned off because when you turn it on, this will absolutely impact uh, on your FPS and the smoothness and you're going to have all sorts of stuttering in there as well. Okay, so for the last thing we're going to check out now is based on the background services or other apps that you have running when you're flying along in Flight Sim. Some of the biggest offenders tend to be, you know, internet browsers, they could be Discord running, um, it could even be map applications. They're all having an impact on what's happening from, the, uh, from your simulator. So it's not necessarily we're going to dive into it today uh definitely uh you know we can put a video together if you guys are interested on you know how do we offload all of this noise uh, and put it somewhere else on a tablet for example and what are the real impact and the real pros uh, to having all these background services turned off plus there's a whole load of options when it goes into windows what you want running what you don't want running for example you can turn off search indexing when you when you're flying you can turn off windows defender when you're flying you're just making sure that windows isn't doing mad things when you want to be flying now there's other settings like game mode you know, your GPU settings like maximum performance, power settings. You have all these other options in which you can do, but it depends. Your mileage is going to vary. For some, they work really well. For others, eh, not so much. But just be aware of it. If you're suddenly getting bad performance in your sim, check your background processes. What's going on outside of the simulator? For example, we can, straight from your task manager, well, we can see, well, look, the sim is using about, you know, 20 to 40%. Chase plane, which is its own engine. I've something here from Fly the Mad Dog client. I'm not using the Mad Dog on this flight, yet it's loaded in. 
Um, and there's other things that could be loaded in that I'm just not using. So you want to be aware of all of these if they're using up some of the resources that you need for flying. So just to be aware of those. So there we have it. Having a look at some of the settings that might be impacting on your simulator's performance. And hopefully after this video, uh, you're in a better kind of understanding of what they actually do. We went through the terrain LOD. That's particularly hard on your CPU, your objects level of detail for the stutters, and of course the texture resolution, just to give you a little bit more VRAM, dial it back one notch and see what happens. And again, we're talking about DLSS and frame gen. I'd always recommend try to get the best performance out of your simulator without having the need of DLSS or frame gen. And once everything's stable, sure turn them back on and then you should have a little bit more headroom we also looked at some of the multiplayer options the biggest offender is of course the wake turbulence there's got to be a fix for that coming soon uh, and of course the fidelity of the other aircraft models have a play around with those to see how they kind of work out in your next group flight so as always uh let me know what you guys think maybe there are other settings right maybe there's other software um that you've come across that really does have a huge impact on giving you the best possible performance i'd love to read your comments uh, so do be sure to leave them in the little comment section below and if you do like this video do be sure to hit the little like button and subscribe for more we live stream every day monday to friday over on twitch and here on youtube and uh, feel feel free to ramble in ask the question and uh, i'll try and answer it if not i'll bluff it but it'll be fine uh, right someone will correct me they always do so thank you very much indeed for watching this video we'll see you on the next one